Hey guys, look what's back. Apart from me and you. <laughs> Looks like she's put that video back up again. Adult friendships, open discussions. It's one hour, 12 minutes, three seconds. I wonder if anyone remembers how long it was before and if she's actually taken something out of it or she changed it to go up for members only for a certain amount of time and now it's down here for everyone but i know so many people wanted me to do it so i shall do it shall we jump in it says i'm live okay girls that's debatable i know i announced this at the last minute so i understand if no one shows up but i'm gonna post it anyway so i'm gonna go ahead and get started today i set out to talk about adult friendships i've had so many people ask me about that and i do think it's something that's important for women especially over 50. I think it's a different situation. I notice the older I get, the, I wouldn't say harder it gets, but the more there is to it. So, okay, I see there's one person out there. I'd love if any of you- Can you tell me if you can hear me, if you can see me? Are you gonna do that in every fucking life that you do? Just wanted to stop to show you this. Tech Help got this in his shop and it's limited edition why do they always make things limited edition anyway limited edition coca-cola zero sugar oreo can you see me oh, let's go there and it's in one of them little thin tall cans like they put energy drinks and monsters in and whatever he saw it at the shop and he was like "Ooh, mum will like that <laughs> so he got me a few and uh, I said, wow, that's amazing. He went, yeah, don't ask for any more. They're all gone. And it's like, yeah, they will be because it says limited edition. It's stupid. But it's really weird. It's just like drinking a fizzy Oreo. Very strange. <laughs> really nice, though. Anyway, let's get back to Lisa and her friends. Let me take some screenshots while I'm here. <laughs> you can just let me know if you can hear me i did set it to you have to be you have to have been a subscriber for seven days to be able to comment on this because it keeps um people from interrupting our party here <laughs> it helps anyway i know that a lot of that is inevitable so i'm open up my diet coke here and why does she always make such a big deal about opening a can of diet coke no one cares lisa and um so the funny thing is i brace yourself it's going to be funny made some notes weeks ago i think it was oh goodness you guys um yeah it's right here why women friendships are complicated and i mean look at my page i just kept on and kept on adding more things and I thought to myself, there's just too much. There's too much to talk about in one video. And yay, Teresa, Rita, Christy, Shayla, Addie. Oh, thank you guys so much for being here. Yes, it's such a good topic because I kind of go in and out of even feeling like, do I even need friends? <laughs> I don't know if you're like that too. I have been so disappointed in people that it will cause you to just wonder, do I even want to go through that again? Or all of these feelings. So anyway, I'm not going to be able to, to talk about everything here. And it became obvious to me as I was preparing for today's video, I didn't think I was going to do a live, but it became obvious to me that I don't have all the answers. I'm just like you guys, just navigating through life. But I am someone who loves to share 
And you know me, you know the person that I am. And so I felt like, well, maybe. No, they don't. They don't know you at all, Lisa. They've no clue who you really are. Because if they did, they wouldn't be there going, hi, 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 hi. Throw me a bone, Miss Sweet Southern Lady. Maybe I have something that I could help you with, or maybe there's some things you could help me with. And that's why I want it to be a discussion. And that's why I felt like it needed to be alive. So I'm going to do my best to talk and, you know, answer some questions or read your comments and everything, which is kind of hard to do because when you're doing YouTube... Either you make it alive and you talk to the people or you just make a fucking video where you don't talk to the people. It's simple. A bit like you. Why have you made it alive if you're not going to interact with people? Then there's no need for it to be a fucking live, is there? and you're you're kind of in the zone so if I ever get that way and I feel like I'm not paying attention to you that's what it is okay it started out with me wanting to talk to you I was going to create a video with 10 points 10 ways or I didn't even know exactly what it was going to be I think this is how it started I didn't know if I wanted to do 10 ways um, we need adult friendships, 10 reasons. I even thought about 10 reasons I don't have any adult friendships or, you know, something like that. And I just couldn't pinpoint what I wanted to say. So I put it, I put in, this is hilarious. I put in mature. I'm really waiting for the punchline. Is it really hilarious? Women. And it's so funny how the first thing that comes up is mature women in bikinis. <laughs> so mature women out there, we still got it. We're still being searched for. Or is it mature women sheer or see-through? You know, just stuff like that. So funny. And I even wrote at the top of this page, this is really turning into a therapy session. And I wrote LOL saying because what I ended up doing was clicking on one of Mel Robbins' videos. I think this video is like a year old or so and she the video is five lies you tell yourself about adult friendships um this is what makes it hard reveal the truth and in the in the i would say about the first third of the video she said this is becoming a therapy session i was like oh my gosh it's becoming a therapy session for me and i will say i haven't slept good for the past two nights i don't know why but I'm feeling kind of emotional today. So I'm going to try to follow my rules and... What's the boo noise? Not spill my guts too much, but I am going to be very open and honest and vulnerable with you guys here today because that's what I have to offer. I have, I have a heart that wants to help. I have a heart that wants to connect with you on a deeper level than fashion and makeup, even though that is important and we do connect with those things, but I think you know what I'm saying. Okay, so let me read over here. Coke Zero though here, yeah, I, I get it. You're either one or the other, that is for sure. Um, yay, let's see, same, same. I only work at being social and having friends to be a good example for my daughter. Mm, that's a that's a point I haven't really thought of, but there are very few I truly connect with. I'm so grateful for your community you've created. Boy, am I grateful for y'all. I mean, beyond. Um, having to distance yourself or cut ties with friends who bring you down and drag you away from your best self. I've done with some, but can't with my bestie because I keep paying she praying she'll change. Yeah. Oh, hey, Sylvia, glad you're here. Okay, I can relate to all of those. And I have all of those. There's only two. I have to say, I don't hold any hard feelings towards anyone because one of the points she had in. Someone's just put at the bottom having a child with autism has made my friendships difficult. Snap. And then having your own disability. That was it. They all just fucked off into the ether. Here. Lost is it that person that you're thinking of it could be it could be me i i'm going to be that person for someone else that they quit connecting with that quit give i quit giving someone else energy i quit 
being relatable to someone else, and that's fine, and I have to be fine with that. And that's something that YouTube has really taught me because I've connected with so many women over the years is that I have to be okay with different points of views and but you're not though are you unless people are blowing smoke up your hole you don't want to hear it you put everything down as haters and horrible comments and whatever when somebody wants to say Lisa maybe if you did this with your hair all you have to say is thanks but I don't want to you don't have to have a meltdown over it the fact that I'm not everybody's cup of tea. She talked about, you know, how you can be the ripest, juiciest peach, but some people don't like peaches. And I, that has been good for me. So, okay, so let's start with her video. And I, I started out with my notes. This is what I do when I watch a video. I'll put who it is and I'll put like the title in case I want to refer back to it. And I'll have the page here to take notes. Well then, if it brings up something within me, I kind of use this as a journal and I start writing down either things that I want to tell you guys or things that I need to reflect on myself. And I had filled up this page before I could even get to her five points. So thinking about, that's why this is a discussion because I don't have a good, um, like process here, but let's just start. Um, she said, the older I get, and that's, okay, th that's what her video came from, is the older I get, the more boring I get. I think she said that. Or it, it was something I put on Instagram. Let me look right now because it's going to bug me. And I, since I'm not going to edit this because it's live, making new friends as an adult is hard because the people I get along with the best also don't want to leave their house. And love that can relate so much and we'll get into that here okay uh the older i get the more boring i get so true i think i've told you when i moved to this neighborhood i just thought oh i'm gonna go to all the parties at the clubhouse i'm gonna have all the neighbors over and do christmas parties what what was i thinking but i had to do it i had to experience it i had to be here to understand that that's just not who I am. And I'm okay with that. That's part of... Is that, was that one of the reasons you picked that house though? Because it had a clubhouse and you thought you were gonna be there all the time. And now you realize you're not. You could have had a house somewhere else without a clubhouse and a bigger garden and your own pool. Us being over 50 is we get to be okay with our weirdness and other people's weirdness. And so another thing that she said is, and that kind of relates to that is, um, I think, oh yeah. She said, if you want to be in, in big parties, then throw one. And I was like, that's so profound. I, I, I will admit, I'm not sitting around thinking, why am I not getting invited to any parties? But if, I, if you are, then throw one. Be that person who throws the parties and then you'll get invited to more parties because you'll be around the people that throw parties. And that is something I have learned. And I remember part of my goal setting for this year was to travel more. And I remember watching a video by Gary Vee and he does these live things where he's talking to a group of people and his staff will record him. And this guy stood up and he says, well, how do I, okay, I think he was telling people to record themselves doing things and having discussions like he is. And he says, well, how do I do that if I don't have any places to go? And he said, we well, create the situation. You have to create those situations. And I was like, Lisa, that's exactly it. You have to create the situation to travel. You have to create the situations to make more friends. You have to take initiative and that... Really? You were just sat there thinking, oh, 
they'll just be drawn to me because I'm so special. I won't need to put in any effort to have friends. Everyone will want to be my friend as soon as they meet me. It doesn't work like that, Lisa. What is it with fucking narcs? They think they're the be all and end all. That is where I started my daggone therapy session here. Daggone. I wrote down, and I even wrote down from me because I didn't know what I was going to be writing. And I wrote down, I am not good at initiating the date. I end up feeling like I may have pressured them into it or put them on the spot. And then she was talking about the liking gap from Yale, a study, a study from Yale, where it's a true thing where we always think that we're not likable. For some reason, we feel like people don't like us. And I have that. I have that. I don't. Hands up how many of you out there feel like people don't like you? I was bullied to hell in school and by my mother and was totally uncomfortable in my skin until I got the fuck away from her and went to Wales and went to Butlins and started working there and she came up one weekend to visit and we couldn't get from one side of the camp to the other with the amount of people that were stopping me saying oh so and so's having a party tonight are you coming oh Jules I need a hug da, 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 da. and it's like I was there and it was like yeah people do like me I am a nice kind person I am a good friend she was the one that was holding me back all the years and like she sat there she's got the perfect body fucking all the makeup she she could want makes herself look presentable every day got a brand new house and she thinks she's unlikable i don't get that because you're a narc Narcs think they're the best thing since sliced bread, so... I, d I don't... This side of her doesn't seem real, is what I'm trying to say. I'm wondering if this is put on, or is this the real Lisa? But she's still a covert narc, so why is she having any insecurities? She shouldn't have any at all. I have that situation where I feel like you know, I don't want to put somebody on the spot. You know, I always tell people, I'm going to be the easiest friend you've ever had. Because if you don't want to text me back, don't feel like you have to. Or if I leave you a message, don't feel like you've got to message me back. I always say those things because I have this feeling that people don't like me. And I've told you girls before, I've never felt like I fit in. Ever, ever. I can remember back to... My first memories of feeling this way was second grade. And I remember we played Charlie's Angels and like one girl was, I can't remember, what was the dark headed girl's name, Jackie? Can't remember, but I was Chris and I had a Charlie's Angels lunchbox and we had some guy who was Bosley and all that stuff. And I remember being surprised that they asked me to play. <laughs> Even at that level, I was feeling a little bit not even left out and not even sad that I didn't fit in, but a feeling of I don't fit in. And then that carried through. I never was a cheerleader, yet I hung out with cheerleaders. So then... Did you apply? It's not apply, is it? Do you audition? How does that work to get into the cheerleading? Because see, you good at that because you're tall they always want the tall ones at the bottom don't they to throw the little ones up in the air see for years i thought cheerleading was just like rah 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 with your pom-poms and whatever it's really dangerous i watched the whole thing on the telly once of like comp cheerleading competitions and it's like what the fuck i didn't know you did that I thought you just sang a little song and did the splits and waved your pom-poms around. They're the things in your hand, not the ones in your t-shirt. But she would have been perfect for that. Why didn't she go and try out for cheerleading? See, if that's how you really feel, Lisa, that you don't fit in and nobody wants to be your friend, 
Here's a word of advice. Stop looking down your nose at people and making assumptions about them. And just walk into a room and say hi and be friendly. And talk about what they want to talk about. Listen. Don't interrupt. Listen. And just join in with the conversation. I can't believe at 50 odd you're only learning how to make friends. People don't like you because you give off the impression that you think everyone is below you. That's why they don't want to have anything to do with you. And you don't have to be a walkover either. Or if I message you, you don't have to message me back. Don't say that. Just message them and wait and see if they message you back. I thought you had the best parents ever. Did your mum never sit you down and tell you? How does Brooke make friends? Has this carried on to her? Because this is quite sad if it has. And I never fit in. Even as a young adult, even when I bartended and waitressed, I wasn't a drinker. I wasn't a partier. I didn't go to late night after we closed the restaurant. So I never fit in. It's just, it was constantly these things where... It didn't mean you didn't fit in. You could still be friendly with your workmates and say, you know, I'm not much of a drinker, I'm going home. That doesn't mean you don't fit in with your work colleagues. I think that's all in your head. I was in a group. It's not like I was um, ostracized or geeky or didn't have friends or didn't have things to do. It's just, I was always on the fringes and I never really was doing the things that they were doing. And I, a lot of times it's because I didn't agree with them. I didn't want to be drunk and hook up with people. I didn't want, I didn't have it in me to be a cheerleader. It so why didn't you find people that wanted to do the things you wanted to do? I'm sure you could have found kids at school that were into makeup you could invite them over and do makeovers and have sleepovers and brush up, brush up, brush up. Do all that thing. Doesn't mean you have to go out and get drunk. Let your friends climb out the window and, and go off with the boys. But you... It was just different things like that. So, I don't know... I, And I don't want to whine and complain because... I don't like that. I don't like watching people do that. But I can't help feel like being here on YouTube has kind of brought that about just slightly because it's not normal to get insulted and for someone to be mean to you every day, every day. And we have instincts within. But what do you call mean, Lisa? What are people writing on your videos that is mean? Rather than just deleting them, how about you address them before you delete them and say, that was mean, please don't. Or, why did you feel the need to say that? And have a conversation with them. And what exactly is mean? I don't like that dress on you. Okay, I do. Haven't you got a big nose? All the better to smell you with. Show you've got self-confidence, they soon stop. And I don't understand why all these beauty influencers are so thin-skinned. Oh, they didn't like my lipstick. Oh, really? It's like someone says they don't like something, fair enough, they're entitled not to like it. You don't like everything. It's this mean thing. It's not being mean. What's mean? Give me an example of what people say to you that you don't like, that you think's mean, that you think they shouldn't have said. Us. That protect us. And, I, you know, they, they say you can be in a room full of people that love you, 100 people, but if you know that 20 people there 
are only there because they hate you. They're only there because they're waiting to twist your words. It is a normal survival feeling and instinct in you to try to protect yourself from those people out to hurt you. It is, it is very normal. And I was watching a Lydia Millen video and she was talking about this and she was saying how she had PTSD from just being hated on constantly. And she brought up something that I had never really thought of that happens to me a lot. I'm gonna hold that thought and read some of your comments. But you forget what you were saying. All of my adult friends are women and I have been friends for 40 years. Oh gosh, okay, let me, oh, can I scroll down? Yeah, okay, it's hard when you get older to make friends. It is, and it's for these reasons I'm about to go through. Um, oh, the older I get, the more I've discovered I'm a semi-introvert. Uh, me too. Me too. I am an introvert. Even though I love coming here, speaking with you, I love going to events, I love going to a party. I do have this thing where I'm excited, excited, excited to go to the party and then right before, why did I, why did I say I was going to this party? You get excited to go to the party because you get to wear a new outfit and do your makeup and put your nice shoes on. And then it's like, ah, oh, shit, I've got to go and interact with people. I don't, you know, I'm going back to bed. <laughs> but then once I get there, I have a good time. I am an introvert. I love my alone time. I crave it. I need it. It is a... You are alone all the fucking time. ...need for me. Okay, Johnny, I don't know if anyone else has experienced this, but every time I go to the doctor, he asks if I'm married yet. And I've been divorced now for 10 years. It's like points against me because I'm not remarried. Oh, okay, that kind of leads into what I'm about to say. I think sometimes people say things to us and they don't realize that it's, it's a little, they don't mean it to be a little jab. Sometimes they do. Sometimes it's a little one up. I've even noticed, you know, John, is just in fabulous shape for his age. He has it going on. He has accomplished so much in his life. What does, what's the first thing that the, a man will say to him when he sees them? Something about his bald head. It's always something, let me bring you down immediately. You, you think you look so good? Bald head, a bald head is the sign of a man that's got a lot of testosterone in his system. So he's probably more of a man than the men that make him of him I've always liked a man with a bald head and I married one I don't see anything wrong with a bald head it's funny because I've been with Jed so long if I see adverts now for like head and shoulders or whatever and there's some bloke running his hands through his hair it gives me the heebie-jeebies it's like that doesn't look right good let me just chop you right down and I've noticed that with people. It's kind of like when I'm eating uh, chicken and all this healthy stuff next to people that are eating cake and appetizers and fried food and they immediately, you're drinking Diet Coke. It's a way to just put you right. Just tell them go fuck themselves. Why do you take it to heart? That's the question I've got for you, Lee. Why? Why do you internalise all this shite? Do you know how many people I have coming on here calling me an old hag? I'm ugly. I'm this. I'm that. My teeth are shit. Um, I've got no hair, which I haven't. Blah, 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 blah. I'd be lucky to be as pretty as you are. Da, 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 da. Do I take it to heart? No. You have John, who loves you. You have Brooke, who loves you. You have Wheel, who loves you. Who gives a fuck what the person on the internet says about anything? I don't know if it's the internet that's done it to people or what it is. But it's like... You can't hear anything, but you crumble and it makes no sense to me. Maybe it's because I've been beaten and battered until I got away from that and now nothing. You can call me anything. It doesn't bother me. Nothing 
bothers me. And that's the place you've got to get to, where nothing bothers you. But be realistic about what you think is mean and horrible, because sometimes it's just a comment. It's just a throwaway comment. Like that time John said Angelina Jolie looked pretty on the front of the magazine so you ran off and got your hair coloured exactly the same and he was shocked when you came home and then you had a mad fit and had all the colour taken out of it again. If you liked it that colour just leave it that colour. If John doesn't like it, tough, it'll grow out. And really your hair colour shouldn't matter. I can shave all my hair off and Jed's still following me, following me around, pinching me ass. They either love you or they don't. doesn't matter what you do to yourself. I just, I don't get how thin-skinned you are. It's all going nice and, and, and dandy when people are saying how kind you are and how sweet you are and how much they love you and blah, 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 blah. But all this is is just a big money-making scam. And if you really cared you'd get off the internet if it was really upsetting you but it isn't is it you're just using this to get people to feel sorry for you oh poor widow lisa everyone's mean to her you need to get a backbone right in your place i don't think that everyone means to do that i think sometimes it just happens and so I've become very, very, very aware of what I say because I think I have been guilty of that in the past of maybe just saying, sometimes you're just struggling for an opener. <laughs> you know what I mean? For the, for the conversation. But um, this is something that when I was listening to Lydia's video, it really hit home. She said, even when people say to her, you're the most hated person on the internet. And they'll, they'll say it meaning they have compassion for her or I, I feel sorry for you, but it's another, it's just another hurt. And I have experienced this for so many years here on YouTube. I feel like people don't want to give me shout outs. I feel like do you give other people shout outs? Works both ways, Lisa. I feel like people don't like me sometimes. And it it hurts. It does. I'm I'm human. I'm a human. I'm very confident and I'm very happy and I'm not going to change who I am. But I can't help but let it hurt. And you know, if you're confident, it shouldn't hurt. I don't understand. I can't compute this. I've had people, my mother calling me fat and stupid my entire life. I was called Four Eyes and Joe 90 and all the rest of it. I was fucking picked on because I didn't have a dad. None of that was my fault. And half the family used to treat me like a black sheep because I didn't have a dad. I've put up with so much shit growing up that now it's like meh. That's what you need to do. Remember how old you are. You're an adult. This is your life. You only get one of them. If someone upsets you, tell them go fuck themselves. <sighs> like I'll do a collab with someone and then they'll tell me I had to defend you. They said this, this, this and this and I'm like thanks thanks for telling me that you know it's here again it hurts and then i'll say i'll be talking to someone and they'll say i know you're a good girl lisa i know your heart but i read your comments and i know and i'm like thanks it's just a constant reminder of hurt and of criticism and I think that that's gotten in my head and it, I'm only human. I'm not a robot. It's, it's, and you know, and then I'll have people say, oh, haters are gonna hate. Feel sorry for them, Lisa. They're hurt, 
hurt people hurt people. Well, I agree with all of that. I know that it's coming from insecurity and it's it's really sad that someone would do these things, but it's easy for you to say. You know what I mean? It's easy for you to say, don't let it bother you. It's easy for people to say, you know, laugh about them all the way to the bank or, you know, all those things that you say, like even at the YouTube conference with that Think Media, he was saying, yeah, I see you on my channel, but I don't see you at the bank. You know, all of that, ha, 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 that's all well and fine, but I'm not that person. I'm the person that gets hurt. And so get off the internet then. If you were that hurt, you wouldn't still be sat there 15 years later, would you? If it really hurt and upset you, you'd have said, fuck that, I'm not doing it. Why should I put up with that? I'm not doing it. And you'd have just watched the people you liked and you'd have gone about your life. But if you do that, you don't get the money, do you? And you're going to say, but that's not what I meant. Well, explain to me then. Because it makes no fucking sense to me, Lisa. And it's just, I don't know, it's, it's not a good feeling. So, okay, then the next thing that came up, okay, let me take a break. Um, it's because I'm happy. Thank you. It is. I do think that my energy is off-putting to some people they think i've had it made and all of this stuff and in a lot of ways i have and i'm grateful for it and i don't try to project anything differently i don't i tell you guys the stone cold truth i really do um and so but you forget you've lived in a bubble and you look down your nose at other people that don't have what you have. Don't look how you think they should look. And don't kiss your hole. We're still waiting for an apology for the lady in the elevator. Don't you think that would have hurt her if she'd seen that? Oh, I was in the elevator with her the other... Oh. Oh, that's what she thinks. Okay. You have to, it works both ways, Lisa. So, yeah, I do think that. And that that does make me, and I've told you, I've like studied mean people. <laughs> I've studied why women are mean. Why are older women the meanest? Um, why would someone be mean to your children? Like things that just are beyond my comprehension. And I will say that understanding it, knowledge is power. And understanding it is helpful. It really is. I think that I trigger a lot of women that are in their masculine energy because oh, fuck's sake. I am not even so feminine, but things that I say like um, John opens my boxes or John moved this for me and or John hell I called John and he redid my debit card for me. I can tell by the comments I get back that that's triggering for people. So I get that and I understand it now. And so when I say it and I get the answer back, I know why I do. So, um, so you keep saying it and wondering why you're getting the same answers back. Stop saying it then. Okay. <laughs> Nicole says, I am the happiest I have ever been. And the haters tried to beat me down and they got the boot. It's the truth. It's the truth. Don't keep people around you. And I'll get into that. So let me go to the next one I wrote down. Oh, okay. I was, this is when I was just purely writing notes to myself about why I don't have more friendships, especially here, like where I live. And I wrote, I don't like appointments or commitments. I have a tough time not letting it take over the day okay this is something that i don't know what my problem is and i and i remember it even being when i used to work like say i had a shift at four o'clock well i felt like the whole daggone day was shot do not ask me to go to a bridal shower or anything during the day because i had to work at four and it would just consume my day so what i would end up doing is maybe the best you could get from me is meeting me for lunch. And then I would go straight home, sometimes take a nap, 
And then I really did like to take a shower, do my hair and do my makeup for work. That was very important to me, even at that time, whereas a lot of girls would do something all day long, like go to the beach or whatever, and then they'd show up to work with no makeup on and their hair wet. And I just never was that girl. And so even... So you're looking down your nose at the girls that are living a life. Till today, if like the other day we went out to dinner with friends and what day was it? It was Thursday and I did a video that morning. I think I did it for Patreon. And then I, we wanted to go to the pool. Okay, here's another thing. I'm trying to always fit in being with John, doing things I like that feed my soul, like going to the pool, getting my vitamin D. I know for a fact that makes me feel better. And then I'll fit in. And then we were going out to dinner at 530. And so I was thinking, okay, I need to look good and my hair needs to be fixed for my video, but yet I'm going to the pool. That's going to mess up everything. And then I want to go out to dinner. So I made it work and I had the best day. Matter of fact, we got home. I took a shower. John finished working on the sink that he's been, We, our sink cracked and he had to replace it because we could not get anyone over here to fix it. We called so many people from so many Angie's list and all the things, never could get anyone over here to fix it. So he had to just find out how to do it and do it himself. So he finished the sink that night. I took a shower and when I got in bed, I was like, wow, I made a video. I went to the pool. I went out to dinner. To go, you know, it's like all these good accomplishments. So, and you wonder why you have no friends. Oh, I accomplished so much. What about the single mum with three kids at two different schools who works? She has to get them up, get, in, get them all ready for school, feed them, feed herself, get ready, drop them off, go to work, work all day, pick the kids up, come home, do their food, give them baths, put them to bed, clean the house. I think she probably accomplished a lot more than you did. I am trying with that, for yes, sure. Yes, you are very trying. But so that's something I need to work on, is not letting a dinner date feel like it's going to sabotage the rest of my day. Um, let's see. Donna, I just let go of a toxic friendship and my heart was broken. Oh, I've been there. I have been there. Because when you have had a deep friendship with someone, they are a part of your daily life and thoughts. And when they're gone, it's much like a breakup from a boyfriend. It really is. When you had, when you truly had your heart in it, um, but yet the less drama is opening my heart to kinder people. Lock that door and God lets it, the good through that window. So true, that's one of the points she made, that if you will not let go of these people with ill will or feeling like something's wrong with you or them, and that's what Mel teaches is to be flexible, to be flexible with friendships, then you can, truly attract people that are you know with you now with your same maybe stage of life we're in or stage of life of your career or um you know have things in common with the person you are now because we are not the same woman we were in high school and or in our 20s 30s or even 40s i'm not even the same person i was last year and I love that about me. I love that I grow and I'm constantly growing. So that's something, yeah, you're exactly right. You have to let go of them. And then I have to work on being open for the new people. I really do. That's something I know. Okay, this is another problem I have. I only have X amount of free time and I need to spend that with my husband and my family, my immediate family, my children, Will and Brooke and my parents and i have to have time to prepare for my next video and my next like 
I have to have time to, I mean, you guys would not believe how long it takes to steam things and try things on for videos. It's like, you're not steaming them, Brooke is. And it doesn't take that long. If they're all on a fucking rack, all you've got to do is put it on, walk up and down, take it off, put another one on. A morning, that's it, done. You're the one that's making it take too long. Like, I run out of time. And I know that is a, a normal process, but there are so many dreams I have and so many things I want to do. And every day, I never have enough time. So it makes me feel like the little pockets of time that I do have, well, I need to do, I need to spend with my parents. I need to spend with John. I need to spend with my children. And so maybe if you didn't visit your parents every fucking day, you might get more done. I run out of time. That is why I will say I have some great friendships that are not local. And we are friends on Voxer, which I was not even familiar with Voxer until I started uh, YouTube coaching. And that is how we um, that's you got part of the package with the one on one training was you could Vox her questions. And that is something I am toying with starting with my coaching is um, Voxer. And let me see right now. I meant to look this up. Hold on. Almost my coaching. What? What coaching? When? Why? Have you actually arranged anything? Are you doing anything? Is have you made a company name? Are you just doing certain things? Is it? Can anyone contact you for absolutely anything? Or are you specialising? What? Do you keep saying my coaching? Well, when's it starting? You've you're certifiable. So why aren't you doing it then? see right now if I can tell you because people have asked me who I got my life coach certification with and I've had people say that it's illegal for me to be doing that or whatever it's not in North Carolina you don't have to have a life coach um, license I just did it for my own self for my own education for my own oh. to help you you know what I mean it was the life coach. It was the certified life coach Institute. That is who it was. And they had high ratings and I think I've got to look that up. Save two hundred dollars now. International Coaching Federation approved five star award winning worldwide accredited institute. CLCI has been in operation for over fifteen years and we are proud to say we have certified over ten thousand coaches of all coach specialities we are a company who cares and was selected as one of the best blah 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 so how much is it who we are class info so look at that oh, that's not popping up right support until special offers register now You will choose your class date on the registration form. Look at the class calendar here. Have a group of three or more. Take a look at our groups page. Blah, blah. Coaching 101. Three-day ICF accredited foundational certification. 33 contact hours. 1,295. Register for both classes in advance. 2,495. Master Certified Life Coach, three day, 37 hours. So in three days, you can become a life coach, really. Okay. Where is you gone? Found them through another girl 
that I like and respect and I like her, the way she goes about it. So I don't know where I, where I got off on that. Um, so yeah, okay, so that. And then number four was, I want to spend free time learning, taking courses, etc. Okay, when I get in the car for lunch and I make myself leave here, I could cook myself my own burgers. I could cook myself my own eggs. I could eat. Yeah, you could cook your own dinner of an evening and give John a night off too. Rolled up roast beef and cheese if I wanted to. But I make myself go out because I do like getting away from work and being alone. Usually that's when I catch up with my boxing boxer messages with friends. Then I don't listen to music. I don't listen to the news. I either do an audio book or I actually do it on Spotify. We have like a family Spotify package. Um, or I am in a course that I'll listen to, or I have a video on YouTube and I do have the premium YouTube, so I don't have commercials. Best thing I've ever done. One of the best things I've ever done. Love it. Yeah, don't you think everyone would love to be able to afford to do that? Not all of us are shitting money. Not all of us are asking other people to pay us $50 a month for nothing. No wonder you can afford fucking Spotify and YouTube premium. Sometimes if I wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning and I know I don't want to get up, but I know I'm so awake and my mind is just going to wander and wander and start worrying about my children, worrying about my parents. You know how what your, what your mind will do at night? And it's so dramatic. I will turn on a video that teaches me something new. And I don't, sometimes I'll go to sleep with it on if they have a very soothing voice. But sometimes I'll just, you know, cut it off real quick and go to sleep. So that is another reason you see me not having a lot of friends. Um, I did do a lot of girl nights with friends when my children were small because I needed to get out of here. <laughs> and John would call me the whole time, trust me. I mean, I had a, you know, it was, it was a typical stay at home mom situation. It was like, I almost couldn't enjoy myself because of worrying about, you know, the situation at home. Um, yeah, throw John under the bus. He called me all the time. Well, what are you doing now? John, open my box. John, cook my dinner. John, move this for me. John, fix that for me. John, make me a box that I can stand on and twirl around. John. But that was that was then. You know what I mean? That's what I was more into right then. Um, called personal growth, exactly. Um, let's see. I have a lot of friends that I'm interacting with on social media. Yes, honestly, when I tell you girls you're my friends, I mean it. I mean it. And I don't know how to tell you, I mean it. I do, I even say to like some of my friends in, you know, in real life, they'll say, if you did this, this and this, you could grow or you would get more subscribers or this or that. And I'm like, yeah, but I don't, I have a hard time not talking to you that have been here because even my YouTube coach told me, if someone stumbles upon your video, they're not gonna know what the heck's going on because my videos are like one 15 year long vlog almost. And so you'll notice I'll say my daughter, Brooke, who's 24, because I do want to bring in new people and I do want to meet new people and I want new, our table to, to grow. Um, but I can't help that I'm, I'm talking to those of you that have been here with me and you're my friends and I mean it. I do mean it. Um, okay. I'm content with being with my husband, my children and my grandchildren. Not good night. I can't even can't even imagine if I had friends and got invited somewhere. Would I go? Probably not. I know. I know it's tough. That's why, um, Voxer is good too, because I have the time. I don't even have time for a phone call. And my friend and my friend Mary and I used to say, I have time to call, but not time to talk. That's the perfect Voxer friend because you can leave, it's like a walkie talkie. You can leave a message 
and they can be listening to you while you leave the message and message you right back if you want to have a good back and forth. But you can also, like sometimes I'll vox someone in the morning when I'm upstairs in my office and then I'll get busy and I won't listen to theirs back to me until I go to lunch or something. So that really comes in handy if you have, you know, want to have that with some friends. Okay, number five I wrote down for myself. I learned that I'm very extroverted with work, et cetera, going to conferences by myself, all of that stuff. I love all that, but really introverted and value my alone time. So I think I've pretty much spoke on that. And I mean alone time, alone, like in the car. I think that's why I love being in the car is because I will, I will get my Diet Coke from McDonald's and I will pull over sometimes and just catch up with my Instagram, um, maybe catch up and, you know, text my mom. If you're upstairs in your mansion, in your empire, you could do that up there. What are you saying? People are annoying you every two minutes upstairs. I doubt that very much. And if they are, aren't they more important than your Instagram? Mom and dad, see how they're doing? Do some things because when I'm here, there's a lot going on. I need to fold the clothes, uh, you know, all the things. So. There's a lot going on. I need to fold the clothes. Lisa, you started off this video looking kind of vulnerable and maybe almost tipping me to the point of feeling sorry for you. And now you've just gone and fucked it again. Oh, I've got so much to do here. I'm getting, people are just pulling me in different directions and I've got to fold clothes. My fucking heart bleeds. Um. I do value my alone time. It's amazing what you keep on learning about yourself as you get older. You would think I would know who I am at almost 54 years old. Okay, people don't like me. I don't fit in. Never felt like I fit. Okay, hmm. I'm glad I wrote this down because I forgot it. I wrote my look in groups. Okay, I do have this feeling too that people judge me when they look at me. Wing liner, false lashes at the grocery store, you know, all the things. You're assuming that's what people are thinking. If you were confident in yourself, you wouldn't give a tuppany toss what somebody on the street was thinking. And maybe you're thinking that they're thinking that because that's how you look at other people down your nose, judging. That people say to me, you're just so unrelatable. You remind me of housewives of New Jersey or Vegas or whatever. Um, little comments that people say to me. And I feel like, so when I meet someone and they say something, or I don't know, I just can't help but feeling like, People don't like me. They don't like my look or they don't like who I am or... That's a you problem though. If you're going to go around feeling like that, that's your own fucking fault. Really? They'll even say to me, when I stumbled upon your video, I thought you were too over the top and ridiculous. But now that I've gotten to know you, you're not or something. That's nice! So you take that as a fucking insult, do you? I saw that comment the other day. I read it out on my channel. When someone said she thought you were a platinum Barbie or something and then she realised that you're really nice. So you're taking that as an insult? Jeez Louise. Then you know, and it's like, I know that they mean well, but it still hurts. Why yes. does that hurt? Really? Why? They can't say anything to you unless they ask you what lip combo you're, you're wearing or telling you how beautiful you look today. It's a you problem, Lisa. I'm done. I was starting to feel sorry for her earlier. Now I'm... No, fuck you. 
Nobody can say anything, but they're wrong. Yet, I'm confident enough to not change. And then I think that puts people off, that they can't insult me into changing who I am. And then that causes a little bit of like inner turmoil. Should I change? Would I be more likable? Would I be more popular on YouTube? Would I be more relatable? And I was like, it's exhausting. You know what I mean? It's like, but I always come back to like, if you've been with me through the years, you have seen, you've seen me try to be more relatable. You've seen me try to be, try to wear red lipstick, try to wear no lashes. And I always come back to how I feel the best. I was actually listening to a, a person. This is, okay, this is how my brain works. Before I was watching Mel, I was watching, um, let me see if I can find her name here. Okay. Um, Arlen Hamilton. She does a lot of videos on becoming wealthy. She was homeless and just, she has a, a fantastic story. I listened to some of her book yesterday while I was at the pool. And um, one of her quotes was, be yourself so the people looking for you can find you. And that hit home with me because I know, I meet you girls. I meet you when I'm out of town and you're the manager of the Chanel store. I meet you in the Dior department. I meet you at the shopping center in Texas at the sandwich shop. I'm thinking of these people that I've met. And when I see you, I think, yes, yes. People are out there that get me, that aren't putting me down. I don't know. And I know that that's a weird thing and I shouldn't think that. And I'm so lucky and all this stuff, but like I said, it's just not normal to be insulted so many times. It is just... I'd like to know your definition of insult. Because what you said about, I thought you were this, but now I've got to know you, is not an insult. But that's how you've taken it. How can anybody say anything to you if you take everything as a fucking insult. Um, like it will give you, um, what is, what is a good word? I hate to even use a dramatic word like wounds or something, but it becomes, imagine if you went out every day and someone said something mean to you at the grocery store or whatever, imagine how that would feel. So that is another hang up. It wouldn't bother me, Lisa, because I'm not as thin-skinned as you. I have is I feel like when I meet someone, I instantly think, mm, That's good. a you problem! Can you not see that? As soon as I meet someone, I instantly think, hmm. Why would anyone want to be your friend after listening to this, really? ...judging me or something, you know? Okay, so... Now I finally got over to the other page and I did write down the things that Mel Robbins, the five things that she said, her points for adult friendships. Let me read some of your input. Um, I love watching your videos, makes me relax. Thank you so much. That is one of my favorite compliments that you guys ever give me is that your children like watching me or your children like the sound of my voice, like people will send me pictures of watching me with their baby and, or your, even your pets like the sound of my voice, even your husband likes the sound of my voice. Oh, you like that, don't you? That their husbands like you. And I think that we, we communicate on more levels than the words we say. And I think that husbands, animals and babies detect probably in my voice that I like them. When I go anywhere, children are drawn to me and it's because I love children. I love their voices are like music to me. And I love 
men. I'm not, I'm not a man hater. I don't feel less than because I'm a woman. I don't feel like mm, the patriarchy and I, I don't know. I just don't feel that way. I love love. I love relationships. I love marriage. I love how a woman loves a man and a man loves a woman. And I think people get that. So I think that that is a great compliment to when, when you say that to me, say thank you, thank you. Um, right, I'm gonna call this here because this will probably be about an hour and I'll do it in two parts because it's an hour and 12 minutes. So if you got this far with me, thank you very much and I will catch you in the next one.